God of all the earth, be present with us now in each of our homes as we connect together. Build us into a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to you through Jesus Christ. God, let your creative light shine for us today, filling our hearts and minds. Let there be healing and sight. Let there be truth and love. Let there be wisdom and the power of the Spirit, so that our joy and praise may ring out and people near and far be encouraged, changed and helped to praise you. And yet we come before you to acknowledge our faults and failings at this time. There are those whom we have failed to help, those who are in need that we have failed to see or even turned away from. There are many whose pain has not been relieved, whose hunger has not been appeased, whose illness has not been healed because we have not been faithful as we ought. Father, forgive us for failing to do what we could have done but did not bother to do or get round to doing. Forgive us and teach us again how much you expect of us, how great the resources when we trust your love in Jesus and keep us fully willing to share that love with others. Eternal God, give us untroubled minds, but let us be concerned about others in need that we may accomplish great acts of mercy and love through our lives and we may be signs pointing to our risen Saviour, who is the way, the truth, and eternal life. Amen. Now, we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The reading is taken from John chapter 14 verses 1 to 6 and verse 27. Jesus, the way to the Father. Do not be worried and upset, Jesus told them. Believe in God and believe also in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house and I am going to prepare a place for you. I would not tell you this if it were not so. And after I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to myself, so that you will be where I am. You know the way that leads to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way to get there? Jesus answered him, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one goes to the Father except by me. Peace is what I leave with you. It is my own peace that I give you. I do not give it as the world does. Do not be worried and upset. Do not be afraid. Amen. You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. These words began our worship today. I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father 
except through me, words we heard from John chapter 14. And these verses form part of our readings for today, the set readings. And these particular verses of scripture can make us uncomfortable. Uncomfortable not in the sense that they challenge us. Uncomfortable because we can cringe at how these verses are used by some. Their missive is, we have the way, we are right, we are chosen, we are exalted above others. So at the outset, let's say there's no place in the Christian faith for such exclusivity. Christians are not exalted before anyone of other faiths or none. I'm all right, Jack, is not the message we would want to proclaim, certainly not in Christian Aid Week, and definitely not at other times. A friend of mine has a wicked sense of humour. That's probably why he's my friend. And he once wore a T-shirt that said, Jesus loves you, but I'm his favourite. It's a joke, but somehow the way Christians can go on, they really believe that Jesus has favourites. I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And the problem we have with that statement is that it is not actually Jesus we have usually heard it from. We've heard it from fiery-eyed zealots who use it as a weapon to bludgeon their opponents into submission and as a proof that everyone who doesn't share their view of Jesus is going straight to hell. But if we allow that concern to prevent us from hearing this saying of Jesus, we're allowing those who try to force it to say what they want to say, to dictate whether we will listen to it or what it might really be trying to say when it was first written down. It's not attempting to answer anybody's questions about the value of other religions or the fate of their adherents. If we want to hear what is being said when Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me, then we need to hear it from John's Gospel as Jesus says it. Jesus is speaking to his closest followers as they face the uncertainty of life without him. When John wrote these words down, he was writing for a Christian community that was being persecuted and under increasing pressure, sometimes even on pain of death, to give up the claims of their faith and conform to the religious norms of the day as set down by the emperor. And in the midst of that, Jesus' words are addressed to Christians and it's about identity of what it means to be followers of Jesus. And so it is to us as we wrestle of how to be people who are people of love and faith and peace and justice in the world we find ourselves in. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So Jesus addressed these words to those who were already his followers, who were anxious and uncertain about the way forward. I am the way, follow me. He addressed them to those who are already his followers, who are confused about what to believe. I am the truth, believe in me. 
He addressed them to those of us who are already his followers, but who were fearful for the future. I am the life. Live in union with me. No way is this about triumphalism. It's about including everyone. You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. There are four labels in this line, a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and God's own people. So this line about being a chosen race and a holy nation is not being spoken to a particular race or nation. Those to whom it is addressed are not distinguished by a common racial background or a common nationality. It's addressed to those who have chosen to follow Jesus and, as was made clear on the day of Pentecost, they come from every race and nation. So in fact, this line, taking the concept of being a chosen race and a holy nation, it's turning it on its head. However privileged you thought your race or nation was, this is no longer your primary identity. Your identity is now in Christ. It's almost suggesting that next time you fill in a form, asking for your race or nationality, you write down Christian. And then there's royal priesthood. Priesthood is another category that has often been about exclusive privileges. The priests have seen themselves as God's special ones. And clearly this line from Peter is calling for such a turnaround understanding we're called to share in Christ's priesthood, a life of serving God and humankind, to stand in the gap of representing God to the world and the world to God, working to narrow the gap. This is for all of you, says Peter, not a privileged few. And the same goes when we say that God's own people. Sure, God's own people can sound very privileged, a very exclusive claim, but listen to what immediately follows it, without so much as a full stop. You are God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvellous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. So you're not given these titles as a reward for being the favoured ones, but as a job description for the task of proclaiming and taking God's love to the world. And there is real humility about this new understanding of the privileged status we have been given. There is a rec recognition that, is, that this is totally grace, totally gift, totally undeserved, but freely and generously offered to us all. Any claim to special honour or status as God's chosen ones is and must be remembered to be a proclamation of God's passionate desire to welcome everybody of every race and nation, gender and social class, age and sexual orientation into the chosen ones of God. God loves you, but he has no favourites. No better, that's not quite right. God loves you and we are all his favourites.
for all Jack Thompson's bands. The Scots may be more familiar with this expression. It means all those who inhabit this earth, we're all part of the human race, we have a common humanity. In the 18th and 19th century, many Scots were removed from their homes in the highlands and islands, forcibly evicted, the clearances, sent off to North America and Australia, sent away, and there's a plaque at Duddingston Kirk, just below Arthur's seat, which reads, Under the seat beside the water makes a home for our Jock Thompson's bands. A home for everyone, a place at the table for everyone. I want to share some words from a Scottish song by Stephen Clarke. Coming home is a moving Scots welcome for the exiled and homeless refugees who ask for shelter and help. Put a light in the window. Your brother's coming home. Set a meal on the table. Your brother's coming home. He'll be tired and weary after all those years alone. He's coming home, your brother's coming home. Take the chain from the door, your sister's coming home. Open wide your arms, your sister's coming home. Don't leave her standing there, after all the pain she's known. She's coming home, your sister's coming home. Coming home to a place they've never been. Coming home to a land they've never seen. Coming home to a family they've never known. Our Jock Thompson's bands are coming home. He's been angry and afraid. Your father's coming home. He's been hounded and betrayed. Your father's coming home. And with every act of kindness, a seed of hope is sown. He's coming home. Your father's coming home. Bring her in from the cold. Your mother's coming home. Sit her down by the fire. Your mother's coming home. Make her warm, make her welcome. Before the chance is gone. She's coming home. Your mother's coming home. From Iraq and Zimbabwe. Your family's coming home. And from Turkey and Somalia, your family's coming home, seeking rest and refuge that they have never known. They're coming home, your family's coming home, coming home to a place they've never been, coming home to a land they've never seen, coming home to a family they've never known. Ah, Jack. Thompson's bands are coming home. We sing a hymn by Shirley Murray. For everyone born, a place at the table. For everyone born, clean water and bread. A shelter, a space, a safe place for growing. For everyone born, a star overhead. And God will rejoice when we are creators of justice and joy. Yes, God will delight when we are creators of justice, justice and joy. <laughs> 